there's two types of training that you go through at the agency in general. There's the there's your intro training, which is whatever your skill set is, whether you're going to be a targeter, field officer, tech officer, whether you're going to do break and entry, whether you're going to do whatever you're going to do, right? Mm-hmm. Hacking. You will go through like a, a prolonged training. And most of those lengths are classified. But my training was the farm, just like you've seen in the TV shows, right? So I went to the farm and then they teach you everything you need to operate independently in the field at that training course. And then from there, you'll continue going through training that's more like specific where it's needed. So if you're going to go into the desert, if you're going to go into the jungle, if you're going to go into a position where, you know, you'll only be in contact with uh, your support element like once every month or once every two weeks or something, if you're going to create a deep cover alias, different trainings, right? So those are much shorter Um, But essentially, all of our training mimics this process of what's known as just-in-time training, meaning you're taught a skill, and then you're immediately put into an exercise where you use that skill. So it's completely different than what you're used to in college or anything like that, right? If you could imagine, uh, like if we had weapons right now, I could basically teach you how to put a gun together and take a gun apart, right? Mm -hmm. And then the next step would be to force you to do it while I'm keeping a clock and you have real result, like real risk. If you don't do it in less than two minutes, you don't complete, you don't continue the training, mm. right? A real risk scenario spikes the adrenaline forces you to, to process the information that you had plus the skill set that you have in front of you. And then you have to perform that's called just in time learning. Okay. If there's no real risk, it's basically like college and you're like, uh, oh, right. I can handle a 40 on this test. I'll just make it up on the next exam. Yeah. Right? There's no stakes. Mm-hmm. You, you just, you can plan it out over the course of a semester and be like, yeah, I'll be fine. And what, and where did you go to first when they shipped you overseas? And what was your main objectives when you, when you, when they sent you, where do they send you first? So we're, this is now we're getting to like more classified areas, right? Because our, our personal operational background is where we start running into classification problems where we start, you know, stuff is confidential, stuff is classified, stuff can't be shared. But what I can say in general is not everybody gets shipped out right away. Okay. Um, some people will be uh, deployed into positions where they're going to like learn a special skill. Like maybe you're going to go work with joint military ops and you might honestly go to like paradise. You might go to like Southern Florida uh-huh. and just practice jumping out of helicopters and huh. doing amphibious assaults. That right. might be your first tour. Other people will stay at Langley. They'll stay at headquarters. Some people might go, you know, take a tour with FBI or take a tour with NSA and just, you know, be a joint liaison, learn that side of the operation. Um, and then other people will go and do different types of field ops, some long-term field ops, some short-term field ops, some special operation field ops, Mm -hmm. uh, different stuff like that. So for me, let me think for me, it was, it was, uh, more of a traditional route. So, uh, traditional overseas assignment, traditional domestic assignment, traditional overseas assignment, traditional domestic assignment. And then it was actually in 2012, um, there were some big developments in like the, the world of counterterrorism and counter nuclear proliferation where my, my military background kind of came into play and I was all of a sudden like fleeted out of this traditional world and into special ops covert action world. Wow. And that was kind of how I ended my career as a program manager doing covert action with uh, joint U S military and other domestic intelligence uh, community partners. Okay. And then we had our first kid, the long story short, we left because we, my wife and I left because we had our child and when we kind of did the math, looking at how other parents in the agency end up, yeah, we were like, eh, I don't know if it's worth it to like potentially sacrifice our marriage and the childhood experience, the parenting experience for a career working for a secret intelligence organization. But so haven't you said that, like said previously where you were? Generally, like the countries that you were in? Correct, yes. Okay. So I specialize in Asia. Okay, Asia. And what's nice is that when you specialize against the target that's an Asian target, um, things just, I mean, you, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to think of the different targets that are in Asia. They're, they're <laughs> actually all over the world. So I've had a chance to travel in Latin America, Central America, Europe, Africa, you know, Asia, chasing these, these bad guys all over the world. Wow. Yeah, it's been a lot of fun. And so your job was basically to just like find yourself in the same environments as these bad guys? Yeah, basically. Yeah. The, uh, so the way that our ops worked, because my wife and I were a tandem couple, mm-hmm. she, she was what's known as a targeter. So her job was to find targets. And the, the way we define a target is somebody who's in possession of secret information okay. that the American government wants. Maybe that secret information has to do with 
you know, nuclear weapons, or maybe it has to do with troop movements, or maybe it has to do with, you know, artificial intelligence, who knows. But she knows what American intelligence needs, and she finds the people who have, who we think have access to that information. And then my job is to build an op where we, where we meet that person and collect that information or prove whether or not they have what we think they have. So a lot of that is, it's just social skills. It's social really? skills across cultural barriers, dealing with people who have no reason to trust you as an American, unless you put on a disguise and pretend that you're not. If you like this short clip, make sure you click here to see the next clip or here to see the full podcast episode.